that this work session regular meeting will take place in a municipal building council chambers at 7 p.m. on Tuesday June 27 2023 thank you if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for an invocation by Deputy Mayor Rahm I pledge O oh God, the creator and redeemer of all the faithful, hear our supplications and through thy infinite love and mercy, graciously grant us the strength and power in our thoughts and decisions to be for the benefit of all people at all times. Amen. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Deputy Mayor Embarrassing? Here. Councilwoman Francois? Here. Mayor Kramer? Here. Councilman Onijaka? Here. Councilmember Potasnik? Councilwoman Pruitt? Councilwoman Udin? Here. Councilwoman Vassanella? Here. I'm sorry, Councilman Vassanella, I apologize. Councilman Wright? Okay, um, we normally would have proclamations and commendations at this time. Item number five on the agenda, you can find copies of the agenda over there. Uh, Councilmember Potasnik was going to do that. He's a little late, so we will skip on to public discussion and go back to commendations and proclamations. We have a motion to open to the public. So moved. moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor of opening to the public, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion is carried. We're open to the public. Five minutes each. No yielding of time. Please state your name and address. You can only come up once. Dave Robinson, 349 Biltmore Lane, Somerset Run, retired AT&T division manager and NJIT engineering graduate. I've analyzed the available traffic studies from the 15 warehouse proposals currently before the planning board and questioned the expert for the B9 proposal at the last planning board meeting. I came away with many more concerns than valid answers. Ten of these studies were done by either Dynamic Traffic or Dolan and Dean consultants. The studies are remarkably similar in methodology given the variety of the proposals and factors like size, new builds, or repurposed properties. The traffic impact studies performed by these consultants are, in my opinion, woefully lacking in actual data. Lots of pages and charts that are based for the most part on theoretical projections from the ITE, Institute of Transportation Engineers and Highway Capacity Manual. Several of the traffic studies were based only on four hours of actual traffic counts, data t some of them 18 months ago. The B9 study was done on Thursday, January 22nd. Some studies relied solely on ITE projections with no actual data counts. Most of the individual traffic studies were done in a silo manner by not taking into consideration the long-term effect of the combined growth from 18 additional proposed or under construction warehouses. This was done even though these experts were fully aware of all the other warehouse proposals. In fact, two dynamic traffic studies regarding two warehouses in close proximity on Schoolhouse noted that either one is identified as a potential significant traffic generator, but then concluded that each project individually would not cause any significant operation conditions. Go figure that one. Most of the traffic study future projections go out only two years, a baseline growth rate of 1.75%. It was taken from a New Jersey Department of Transportation data that represented the entirety of Somerset County not the small area that we're talking about, which is a two-mile radius around the intersection of Elizabeth and Schoolhouse from Davidson to Randolph. The 15 new proposals on the planning board website and three which have been recently opened or are being built would add, if approved, approximately 3.2 million square foot more of warehouse footage and close to 500 more loading docks into this already heavily warehouse-laden zone. 
The township may cover the potential tax revenues from these warehouses, but should not overlook the property tax revenues from the four senior communities in their immediate area, as well as the Summerfield's development. For example, the Amazon Distribution Center has paid about $2 million per year in property taxes in 21 and 22 per your tax department. Our senior committees, communities paid about $22 million a year in property taxes, 10 times that. From the studies I've analyzed, authored by Dynamic Traffic and Dolan and Dean, never once did they conclude that the particular proposed warehouse would have a negative impact on the surrounding traffic and quality of life for the residents. All these impartial studies were paid for by the developers. It's not too hard to predict where the traffic expert would come out on these studies. Finally, there is this. Your own ordinance, 4371-22, frequently asked questions includes the following. Many of these applications are located either in close proximity to sensitive land uses, including residential zones, and or located a significant distance from 287, which would require truck traffic to traverse through residential areas. Particularly due to their location, such developments would be far more likely to produce negative impacts to sensitive land uses, including noise, traffic, and air pollution. The town council should tell the planning board to put on hold indefinitely, or at least five years, any further approvals, including the B9 proposal. We need to collectively see the impact of the existing and under construction warehouses. It would result in actual data and experience not standalone short-term projections. Given some time for this small area to absorb, if possible, the inevitable increase in car and truck congestion, pollution, and noise that even you recognize as possible, if not likely. When you are in a hole, stop digging. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jim Salomos and I live at uh, 7315 Minute Man Lane in Canal Walk. Um, I don't think much discussion has been uh, had regarding the impact to these, to we homeowners because of the warehouse traffic. I live in Canal Walk and I'm 0 .6 miles from 989 parking bays that Amazon holds. That's 989, the two bridge facilities are gonna add probably another thousand. And what keeps me up at night, and I hope this is important to you folks, all I hear all night long, beep, 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 the sounds of the trucks in and out of those warehouses. And if B9 goes up 0.6 miles, it's going to come into half a canal walk. So what I'm suffering with now in the middle of the night, I can't sit on my balcony because all I hear is beep, beep, beep. I've become accustomed to the sound of the train. Soothing. The sound of the beep, beep, beep is not soothing. It's annoying. So I just wanted to share that for those of you that don't know what it's already doing to we homeowners in Canal Walk. Uh, the other thing I want to touch on is about two or three years ago, I called our good mayor to ask about, oh, we're so pleased to see that schoolhouse road was repaved, restriped, wonderful. We could use some bike lanes. I was told, well, work's not done, but our good township manager, we're going to work and I'm going to get bike lanes for you. The township has that in their master plan. You see bike lanes all over the place. We could use them on Schoolhouse Road between our development and Elizabeth Avenue. I think the discussions that we had indicate that there's ample room to put the bicycle lanes. We need them to get over to the new development on Randolph. We put them in our own development in Canal Walk. They're called Sharrows. The pictures of bicycles and arrows that indicate this is a shared roadway. So that's what I'm entreating our town council to please move this forward and get our bicycle lanes in. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, my name is Anthony Riccio. I've appeared here before. I'm an urban economist and I've put together for the state of New York and the city of New York the key legislation resulting from the Clean Air Act to combine economic development with environmental protection. 
the town council and in particular the town lawyer was gracious enough to talk to me. I see a conflict here. You've got an ordinance, a set of ordinances by the town council. At the same time, existing zoning requirements. Those zoning requirements were ill-conceived, but have not been adjusted. So whether or not we have an ordinance, let's say for the, uh, we'll pick the noise ordinance where you cannot operate beyond 7 to 10 o'clock. There is no analysis that you have, nor the planning department has, that could say why you did that. The existing zoning doesn't require it. If this goes to court, the town will be accused of being arbitrary and capricious. The same is true with the 200 feet distance between residential and the warehousing and 500 feet. What is the difference? You can't prove that. I went to a planning commission hearing last week where I saw phantom numbers that were just told you, phantom numbers that did not demonstrate real traffic. But it was done by a planning commission that has phantom numbers about the existing traffic on the streets. So the planning commission doesn't know what's on the street. So you expect a developer to do that? I think that will become arbitrary and capricious. So somehow, this has got to be elevated to the state. This is a statewide issue. The legislature has to get involved. I would recommend that the council and the mayor go to the state and try to put something together similar to what was done in New York State, the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, um, Kiki Anastasakos, uh, 3204 Enclave Circle in uh, Somerset, New Jersey. Um, I have two points to make. Well, actually, one is a, a FYI, and the second is a question. Um, <clears throat> last Saturday, uh, myself and two other uh, members of the Citizens Warehouse Action Group attended a webinar um, it was actually called, I'm sorry, it was not a webinar, it was a warehouse convening offered by the uh, New Jersey Clean Water Action, uh, which is one of the most respectable environmental nonprofits, um, along with the League of Conservation Voters uh, in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> and um, uh, this was exclusively a, a four hour meeting uh, with uh, different grassroots organizations, uh, environmental lawyers, and um, uh, law clinic, environmental law clinics, um, and there was, as well as members of the Teamsters Union that uh, surprisingly were attending as well. And um, among uh, the myriad of ideas that uh, were uh, circulating and discussed in the breakout sessions, one was um, how to deal with truck idling, because whether we like it or not, um, and of course we're grateful for the, uh, the ban on warehouses, uh, but there are enough warehouses already and there are uh, more warehouses in the pipeline um, that are not affected by the ban. And so in the near future, we expect to see um, a further increase um, a cumulative uh, increase in the number of trucks and hence an increase in the number of trucks that are idling on public roads. So one of the ideas that I wanted to just pass along as food for thought was um, to create, one of the reasons that trucks idle uh, is because the drivers are tired, uh, they stop in order to eat, um, take a nap, um, and sometimes to wait for their turn to unload or, or load if they are early and so forth. Um, so one of the ideas is to create a Franklin Township rest stop um, by making use of one of the vacant corporate buildings that we have available. 
uh, or any other land that is uh, proposed. Of course, it would be <laughs> far away from the, uh, you know, the residential areas. But it would provide a safe, it would be gated, I mean, it would be fenced, rather, and it would provide a, a safe area uh, for the drivers to, um, to stop, Maybe there can be showers there and a place for them to eat, maybe vending machines. And um, when it's time for them to go to their warehouse, they would have a very short, a very short uh, drive to, uh, to their respective uh, warehouse. Um, so I, I thought it's a wonderful idea. And um, it, it works. Uh, I tell you, the two Teamster members that were there, um, uh, were in the same uh, breakout group as I was, and uh, they were very much in favor of that. Uh, we all understand that their job is um, extremely difficult. Uh, not too many people can drive those trucks, and they really don't have, except those rest stops, if we can call them that, on 78, another right off the highway, those are not even rest stops. Those are just some space where they can park. And so why can't we give them more respect and also eliminate a problem, um, a problem in that is, is clearly something that's coming up um, uh, very, very soon in our township. And since I'm running out of time, I will leave the other comment for another time. You can wait. Um, so, so that's my food for thought for tonight. Thank you. So Thank you so much. I'll answer you in depth and uh, afterwards. I just want you to know we weren't making fun of you. We had been discussing exactly that. You're and kidding. That, and that's that's what we that's what we've been giggling about, not giggling at you. Wow. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! I'll wait then for for your report. Well, it may okay, not be fantastic, but. But we, we hear you. Okay. It was discussed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. My name is Sally Zaharchak. I live at Four Constitution Way in Somerset, New Jersey. Um, I've spoken to you before. I gave you a standing ovation when the noise ordinance was passed. I'm used to, in management training, I was taught catch people doing something right and you did something right that day. Um, I believe very much in catching my children when they're doing something right, rather than catching people doing something wrong. I don't have a political science background. I don't know a whole lot about government. My daughter, that's her ballywhack. Her undergraduate was in political science. She's been coaching me a little bit about what that really means. Um, but I do know I chose this town, and I told you that a while ago, because I love it. And I've invested now, since my retirement, 17 years here, making friends, associates. My two sons are bankers, mortgage people, bankers, in the state of New Jersey. They want me out of here. My other son owns a financial planning firm in Red Bank. He wants me out of here. And my daughter's an attorney in North Jersey, and she wants me out of here. And now my four kids have saked every realtor they know, and they know a lot, on me, and they're calling me to try to get me to move. I don't want to move. I want to stay here. I think we have your attention now. You're doing the very best job, I think, with some very deep damage control that you can do. But I do think, I really do think, that this should never have come to this point. I worked with actuaries. In fact, Bill Corrigan, who's head of the uh, uh, actuarial, um, vice president of actuarial science at Empire Blue Cross, was my boss. I was trained by the best. I understand data. Garbage in, garbage out. Bill used to say to me, if your assumptions aren't correct, if your data's not correct, your report's not correct. Anybody who's intelligent knows that. You don't have to have a degree in actuarial science to know that. I have been looking at some garbage reports. I agree with Dave Robinson 
The traffic data, the traffic studies are married to also an NJIT graduate engineer. We're not stupid people. These reports, I don't know who looks at them, and I just am imploring you tonight to continue to remember this is a political science arena. It is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. We talk in this country about trying to help the underdog, and we are bulldozing senior citizens, disabled veterans, and the elderly, and children in this country in a way that I'm astounded by. And I implore you to make sure when you're given reports and there is data that you're having somebody double check them. I hired people. I know when you hire a contractor to do a report for you that they give you what they think you want to hear. I know how that works. Everybody in this room knows how that works and so do you. So please, all I ask, double check your numbers, double check your data, and serve the people you were sworn to serve. And I thank you very much, because I want to stay here. Thank you. Anyone else? Marlon Kwan, 28 Jay's Corner. Um, I was very much dismayed at this last planning board hearing, particularly because um, with brash and boldness, um, some of the things that were discussed, particularly the, the number of driveways that were being proposed by B9, were in fact discussed early on to say that there were going to only be two driveways. And now the town is asking for three driveways. And before, the developer wanted three driveways but chose not to have them because they wanted to avoid variances. Now the township is requesting a third driveway right back into the hands of the developers. Why? Because the 32 or 35 parking spaces in the smaller parking lot can't make a left turn as required or as they desire, I should say rather, instead of going around the building to the larger parking lot and getting out that way. And all in, all in with the argument that it's safety first and also for the convenience of those that are trying to get to 287 in regular cars. And the argument of not having a turn curb so that the trucks cannot make the left, so you need a third driveway in order to make that curb. Well, that sounds all pretty fishy to me. And it's becoming worse and worse with every meeting. I will tell you, Mr. Mayor and Council, this is, this is not correct policy nor correct procedure. If we're going to have a, a dictated township planning board telling them that they don't need a variance to have a third parking lot, uh, I'm sorry, a third driveway for the safety of residents, that's not correct. You can still have a turning curb forcing every car to make a right turn out of what is proposed to be their B9 warehouse going up to Randolph and down Randolph to 287. Nobody needs to make that left turn, especially the smaller parking lot. And if you say that it's, it's, it, 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 it's a safety hazard for the 35 cars to go around the building. What do you think the safety is for them making a left while trucks are making a right? So it, to me, that the logic just doesn't fit. And it, it smells. And so I, I just ask the council and I implore the council to look at this in a different way. They wanted it first, the developers wanted the three driveways first, but they didn't want it because there would be a need for a variance. Now the township planning board is asking for a third driveway and avoiding the variance. Just doesn't, doesn't look right. And, and at the end of the day, you know, a third driveway also is more risky 
for those pedestrians trying to walk down Schoolhouse Road, as well as bikers. And we don't even have bike lanes, let alone the fact that you can't bicycle ride up Schoolhouse Road towards Elizabeth. I mean, this is insane. You, you, you can't have it both ways. So I implore you to, to, to look at this and do whatever you can, but the fact of the matter is, is that at the end of the day, this really doesn't smell right. Thank you. <sighs> Jan Brandt, 22 Bryant Court. And I don't know if I'm going to get through this because I'm really upset. I was on vacation last week and I didn't have to think about all this and it was fantastic and I got back today, yesterday, and now it's it's back hitting me in the face and, and it's it's really stressful and I know you all have done a lot for us but I feel like it's it's not enough. Um, you know, the B9 warehouse, schoolhouse, is going to affect Canal Walk and it's also going to affect the families over at Somerset Run. And it's going to be, figure, from where you're sitting, Mayor, to the back of the room, that's approximately 100 feet. So from my back patio, 100 feet away, that's where the warehouse is going to be built, right? And that, that's where the, the parking lot's going to be built. I know Mr. Vornlocker is going to correct me, or he's smirking right now, or something like that, which is really not right. But anyway, uh, there's going to be 60 truck bays. We all know that diesel trucks affect the breathing of families, young children. I know across on Schoolhouse, there's, they, they have playgrounds out there. I'm sure they're not going to let their kids go out there. I know that I'm not going to go out on my back patio. I know when my grandchildren come over my house, I'm not going to go on my back patio with all the trucks. I mean, Mr. Robinson could probably tell us how many trucks an hour it is, how dangerous it's going to be for me. And you all are supposed to be protecting us. You're, the MLUL says that if something's going to be built, and it's going to affect the health and safety of the community, then you can stop it. I know Mr. Dominic told me that it doesn't have any variances. And, and I like what Marlon was saying, and that was something I was going to say. In the scenic corridor driveways, there, this, I feel like everything is in benefiting the developer, right? I even found a picture on Facebook with the developer. Um, you know, he's sponsoring a golf thing. I think Mr. Dominic was in the picture, Mr. Vornlocker, Mark Healy, and Anatole Heller, who sold that property. And we, we know that this is, you know, all part of the, the picture of why this property is was sold over to Link Logistics. And I feel like everything is... is is benefiting this developer. Um, and number one, the, the, um, there's no variances. So you guys could just approve it, one, two, three. However, in the scenic corridor district overlay, it says that driveways should only be 12 feet. So here Marlon's talking about they want three driveways with a big thing that turns. I mean, of course they have variances, but it's being overlooked by Mr. Healy and Mr. Dominic saying, well, of course we have to make bigger driveways because it's a warehouse. No, the scenic corridor says 12 feet driveways. Why are we not saying that this isn't a variance? I just don't understand why it's not a variance. I didn't attend the last meeting, um, and boy, you know, I, I was, um, uh, I was just in another place because I was unplugged from the internet. But I heard that at the last planning board meeting last week, June 21st, that Mr. Dominic, I know he's watching. Hi, Vince, and I want to say Vince has been great. He has helped me with all the stuff I need, all the paperwork I need, but I heard that he was consoling Liz Gaber, actually hugging her after the meeting, actually like, you know, the side hug and consoling her. I mean, if you tell me that developers aren't getting, I mean, nobody, Vince Dominic, I don't think hugged anybody in CWAG and consoled them, but he's consoling the developer. Yes, and the other thing is, and now I'm going to tattle on Vince Dominic. I was once here at a planning board, not a, at a township council meeting, I believe, where Vince came out to one of our members in the community and was telling him because he he was saying how there's empty warehouses and he was in his face telling him he was a liar. So sometimes the way that we're treated is is 
is, has not been respectful. But it just seems like everything, I, I still have 42 seconds, that everything is for the developer. Everything is for the developer. Just like, not last meeting, but the meeting before, the developer presented new information, and I actually like tried to say something, and it went ahead, and he went on for hours and hours about new information that nobody else had, and, and, and they shouldn't have done it. They know better, but they're taking advantage of us. Do you think seniors want to be donating money to help funds to fight this warehouse? I know Link Logistics knows that, and they're trying to wear us down, and it's not right, and you all need to do something about it, because this is, maybe I don't have studies about our health, but you know it's going to affect our health. Terry Thorson, 18 LeBed Drive, Somerset. I want to get a job with one of these traffic study people. Because when you look at the traffic studies for all the different applications, it's boilerplate. It's the exact same report with a chart that is the specific chart that tells you how many extra seconds you're going to wait at an intersection. I don't care. I don't care how many extra seconds I have to wait at an intersection. That doesn't really belong in a traffic report. What we really need is how it's going to affect the traffic. We've had at least four major traffic accidents in Franklin within the last week, one with the death of a person. The traffic in Franklin is getting worse and worse, and I think maybe uh, we have to look at our traffic and say, this, these are the limits that we have. Um, something else, at that um, clear water action convening on Saturday, we had the biggest contingent. There were people from New York, there were people from New Jersey and Pennsylvania. We had four people from CWAG, we had a member of the zoning board, we had a resident of Franklin who was actually representing an environmental group from New Brunswick. There were only about 40 people there. We had the biggest contingent. They were horrified when they heard how many warehouses were proposed in Franklin. Mercer County was, already, was up in arms because they had one. Countywide, one, next to Quaker Bridge Mall, on Route 1 which is a really major highway in New Jersey. So we're getting looked at by other municipalities in the state as being the dregs of humanity. If you don't want to live in a good place, go to Franklin, because they'll have whatever you want to do. Um, something else, in all the applications, I noticed that whenever they ask for a variance, they're going to advance the Municipal Land Use Act. They don't say how they're going to do it, they just say they're going to do it. Why don't they have to give a reason of how they're going to advance that ordinance? Another thing I noticed, when you do an application, you have a stormwater study, an environmental study, you have a traffic study. There's no air quality study. We don't require an air quality study. With the Canadian fires that we had a couple of weeks ago, that was 2.5 particulate matter. That's what the trucks give off, 2.5 particulate matter. So we had a preview of what it'll be like. In fact, the next two days, we're under a warning for the next couple of days. It's not going to be nearly as bad as it was a couple of weeks ago, but our air quality has been dropping from good to moderate and probably near the borderline between moderate and the next worst level. So we'll have another preview of what it's like. Let's see. Um, and I was impressed by the, uh, I was really shocked when I saw the Teamsters there. Um, they had their Teamsters t-shirts on, and I thought, why are these people here? But they were advocating for more humane treatment of truck drivers. Maybe in a warehouse, don't use all the square footage for a little office and a lot of warehouse space. Maybe cut a little chunk out and make a place where they can go to the bathroom. Because to tell you the truth, what we've heard from UPS drivers is that over at one of the warehouses, since the drivers don't have any access to bathrooms, they're using outside the building. And what happens is the maintenance people have to come out once a week and spray bleach on the side of the building because of the health hazard. Just take these things into consideration, please. Thank you. I'm Stan Zaharchak. I'm with um, uh, for Constitution Way in Somerset. 
Um, I just want to take a little different approach. I want to build upon what the first uh, gentleman indicated. The truck traffic uh, in this town right now is very severe. I, it takes me sometimes two and three turns of the light to get through and into, onto 287. I got my hands on this dynamic traffic report, and they're saying that every, tra every warehouse supposedly has 100 traffic, 100 trucks going in and out. So that's, I mean, the trip in and the trip out. So it's 50 trucks, but it's two trips in and out. The, uh, if you multiply that by what you have in the township now, at about 25 warehouses, I think you have here, that's 2,500 trucks, right? So at uh, trips of trucks, if you have another 20 trip warehouses yet to be built, that's another 2,000 trucks. I want to know how 2,000 trucks are able to navigate two-lane highways in small areas. What is the town going to do about that? That's something that is going to fall on the taxpayers to widen the roads, to make special concessions for the truck drivers and the like. I just feel that it's uh, something that township has to take into consideration before they allow all of these trucks into our area. Thank you. Angelica Granados, 3307 Jackie Hallow Trail in um, Canal Walk. Um, a few months ago, the, uh, an ordinance was passed. It's number 4271-22, prohibiting heavy trucks over four tons for driving on Metler's Road. Um, but for now, I, I've seen only signs that says it's prohibited only between um, Schoolhouse Road and um, Western Road. Uh, Metler's Road is, um, is um, Elizabeth, I mean, Schoolhouse Road and Amwell Road. I don't see any signs from Western Road and Amwell Road. Why? Why? Oh, okay, that's my question. And the other thing is that uh, I think some time ago, you all, Mr. Bernacker also said that um, on local roads, Oh, the limit is also four tons, except when it is um, in the industrial area. But Western Road is a local road. Well, that's what I. That's what I. Think. You can correct me if I, if I, if that was wrong. But I thought that was the thing that that, that local roads only allow uh, four tons, and uh, that Western Road is a small road. It's also like one lane for each side. If possible, I mean, for for, um, for big trucks, I think it's it's very difficult to to even have two two cars there. Um, so uh, it's very small road, uh, but it, they still doesn't have a sign that says that uh, it's only allowed four tons. So thank you. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak? No one looking to come forward, Mayor. A motion to public portion be closed. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Seconded. We've then seconded all in favor of closing public portion. Say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion is carried. Public portion is closed. Before we answer any questions, let's do the accommodations and proclamations. Councilmember Potasnik. Good evening, everyone. Good setup. Okay, yeah. uh, so happy Pride. My name is Ed Potasnik. I'm on council. And as many of you know, June is Pride Month. And we have a proclamation from the Township Council, as well as the mayor, 
uh, for Pride Month. So I'm gonna read it and then present it to uh, an outstanding uh, leader in our school district, uh, Dr. Gail Nelson, who leads an LGBT club and uh, hear from uh, a, a recent graduate potentially as well. So whereas the Township Council and the Township of Franklin recognizes and proclaims the month of June 2023 as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer, questioning, and plus, as we refer to it as LGBT plus, Pride Month. And whereas all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights, LGBT plus individuals have had immeasurable impact spot. to the cultural, cultural, civic, and economic successes of our country and whereas the Franklin Township is committed to supporting visibility, dignity, and equality for LGBT plus people in our diverse community and whereas while society at large increasingly supports LGBT plus equality, it is essential to acknowledge that the need for education and awareness remains vital to end discrimination and prejudice. And whereas this nation was founded on a principle that every individual has infinite dignity and worth, the Township Council calls upon the people of Franklin Township to embrace this principle and work to eliminate prejudice everywhere it exists. And whereas celebrating Pride Month influences awareness and provides support and advocacy for the LGBT plus community and is an important act to engage in dialogue, to strengthen alliances, build acceptance, and advance equal rights. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Township Council of Franklin Township, Somerset County, New Jersey, hereby proclaims the month of June 2023 as Pride Month in support of the LGBT plus community. Hey, good evening, I'm Dr. Nelson, and I teach at the high school, Franklin High School. I've been there for, this is my eighth year, but I've been in the district for 36. So when I came to the high school, there was a need for a GSA, or LGBTQIA club. Um, students advocated for that, who were in the community, who felt isolated, some felt ashamed, and some, when they needed someone to talk to, had no one to go to, because they don't trust people with the information. So, of course, at first when they asked me, I was like, oh no, I don't know what to do. I'm already doing a club. You know, and I was new at the school, so I felt like I might be stepping on someone else's toes who probably wanted that position. But since no one stepped up to the plate, I certainly took the charge. And as a result, our students are graduating, our LGBTQ students are graduating with honors. They are working, they are proud of themselves. They know they still have the support, even though they're not in school. And this is Noela. She's graduated in Noela. I, I get it wrong all the time. Noelia. No OK. Um, she graduated, but we're still in contact because it's important that the support system stays intact. It's not when they graduate from school, you graduate from your support system. And I'm honored today to say that the PACE Club, that's what it's called at the high school, I had a group of students and myself, we wrote a grant, it's called 50 States, 50 grants, 5,000 voices. I'm honored to say that we won a $10,000 grant and we proposed to have a youth conference, a mental health youth conference and social justice conference right here in Franklin. We want to be the biggest one. I'm contacting NJEA, SCEA, FTA, Garden State Equality and some of our students are even going to leadership camp this summer. So we do a lot in that club. We're small, but we're mighty. Everything's confidential, but they need that support. And I'm gonna let a graduate right here discuss some things for growth. Good evening. Uh, oh, since you're yeah. so tall. There you go. Okay. So my name is Noelia Rodriguez. Um, as Dr. Nelson um, said, I am a recent graduate from Franklin High School. I graduated in 2020, the class of COVID. And I didn't get prom. I didn't. I barely got graduation. So, but um, I was grateful to have the opportunity to be part of Pace when it just started. I was the vice president of the club. I was a senior when it first started the first year. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. 
Um, so I would like to explain that it was a very supporting environment, environment for me. I had just came out as transgender. I was not presenting as female. I had not started hormone replacement therapy. My name was not even legally changed. But throughout the process, and throughout the club, Dr. Nelson and so many of my peers allowed, well, gave me the opportunity to get to know them and know that I'm not alone. And even Dr. Nelson helped me with the resources with getting the forms I needed to legally change my name. She gave me resources mentally because I was going through such a hard time, which a lot of the LGBT community goes through. I don't know if you guys know, but 40% of transgender people are more likely to commit suicide. Sorry, I'm a little nervous, like I said. 40% of transgender people are more likely to commit suicide than cisgender people. And I think that's just very mind-blowing. And I can say that I identify within that 40% because I did have multiple suicide attempts throughout my journey. But today, with the help of PACE, with the help of Dr. Nelson and the peers that I worked with, I was able to find my voice, find my community, and find a group of people that supported me. Today, I have been on hormones for three years. I feel happy with how I look. I have gone gender reassignment surgery, both top and bottom, which I'm very proud of. I'm here today, and I got to thank Pace for giving me that space to grow and giving me the resources. And I know that I'm going to continue to work with you guys because I am actually so inspired with Dr. Nelson and Pace. I'm, ag I'm actually an education major today. I'm study studying to become a teacher. And I hit American history teacher, so I'm going to be teaching our students about everything, about black history, the real black history, and about the LGBT history in a very appropriate manner. And I just want you guys to know that, yes, love is love. Trans men are men, and trans women are definitely women. Thank you. Um, to all our young people out there, as an openly gay person, um, I just want to say, you know, there was a, uh, a phrase we used uh, back, Ellen DeGeneres was part of a movement, it gets better, when those times are tough, and I really appreciate you sharing your personal story, because many of us have that, particularly in the LGBT community, um, know that there are people you can, you can be with, and it does get better. There is light at the end of the tunnel, there is acceptance, there, we are a community together, um, and that's why it's so important to celebrate pride, because we don't have equal rights, because we're not looked on the same, and we have to remind people that together we are embracing and getting through those difficult moments. So I know we took up a little time, but uh, Dr. Nelson, keep up the great work, and um, to you and your journey, and everyone, um, thank you. And just real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to Kevin Locke. He was the person who was instrumental in getting the petition to get Pace on board. Um, he had to work tonight, and he just started cosmetology school. He wrote a long thing for me to read, but most of all, he just wanted to thank town council for being supportive. And hopefully, you will all support us when we start planning for this youth conference, because we want everyone to be out there helping. And it's for everyone. It's an inclusive uh, youth service kind of conference. So don't just think it's LGBTQ. We embrace everyone. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. I was just thinking I'm so happy you failed at suicide. Okay. Um, that was very moving. Uh, okay, to answer some of the questions, um, first gentleman who got up, I think Mr. Robinson, uh, talked about traffic studies. Um, I implore you to repeat this at the planning board meeting. They're the ones who will vote on it. You asked us to speak to the planning board. If I did, that would be reason, if they were to turn down the application and it was, came out that I spoke to them, that would be reason for the developer to go to court and say that uh, the decision should be overturned. Um, you essentially said, asked us to uh, 
have a moratorium on further warehouse building. The problem with the moratorium is it's Stop me if I'm wrong or I'm going too far. Um, the problem is, is that when someone goes before the planning board, a clock starts. And we have so much time to begin the hearings and to, comp and to complete hearings. And if we were to have a moratorium, it's very possible the developer would just say, OK. He'd wait for the clock to run out and say, you haven't listened to my um, application on time. And they would go to a judge, and the judge could grant them their application just exactly as they've applied, without it, any interference or interference, any adjustment by a planning board. So, while I understand you can do a uh, a moratorium due to reasons of health, it is the opinion of both our township attorney and the. Um, planning board attorney and some other t attorneys I've talked to who I don't want, I don't think it would be fair to disclose their names, who agree that that's not what the statute is talking about. They're talking about an emergency such as a uh, septic system, I mean a sewage system failure. Um, so, so they can't take any more uh, sewage, so, they, so they've stopped new building because of that that because especially since we don't govern air quality and there is no requirement for those buildings to meet any air quality standard that if we were to shut them their operations down due to air quality that we would have no standing uh, maybe standing is a technical word no leverage in court on that am i basically correct so they essentially would have carte blanche if we did a moratorium. Believe me, we've, I have discussed this multiple times. How can't we, why can't we do this? What, is there a way we can do this? And I'm told that I would be putting you in jeopardy if we were to try to do that. So that's why we haven't had a moratorium. There's been a lot of discussion on traffic and I, I appreciate what was said. I understand you have a traffic expert and I hope he or she brings up the points you've brought up. Um, so we have, you know, the person who is concerned about him sleeping with B9 so close to his home, we have put in hours of operation. And I uh, disagree with the gentleman who's had the experience in New York. I think we have a very good case. I don't think we're arbitrary and capricious. I understand those words and how they're used. Um, I've put a lot of thought and planning into when we turned off further uh, developments of warehouses, and I, I think we have a, an extremely good case. I think it's obvious to all of you that we have a good case. Um, uh, Mr. Kwan, uh, I'll let Mr. Vornlocker just explain the three driveways when uh, he gets time to speak. Um, not all variances are bad variances. And you, again, try to imply there's a conspiracy here. There's a reason why the, for the three uh, driveways. And that, again, will be working in your favor. I'll let Mr. Vornlocker get into the details. Um, it is, although I do believe this is a statewide issue, and it's something that there are state statutes that I would put you in jeopardy if we try to overcome. Um, that's why I've been talking with uh, Assemblyman Danielson about various things we might try to do at the state level uh, to do that, so I, to change things. So I'm working with him diligently, trying to get things done, but it is Trenton and it's, things are slow. Um, Kiki, and I, I don't disrespect you if I calling you by your first name. I just don't want to mess your last name up. I think that would be more disrespectful. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled that you brought that up because we were thinking of doing it, or at least discussing it, and I think it's something we have to be very careful with. Um, I was, I, I'll be honest with you, I was afraid if we did that, you would accuse us of pandering to the truck drivers. 
So I'm glad you have brought it up. That gives us a little more freedom to, to work. Our concern is, and, and uh, Councilwoman um, Francois actually wrote exactly what I was, what we've been thinking is, are we going to attract more trucks? It's not just Franklin trucks that will use it. Word will get out very quickly, and the truck that's on their way to Pennsylvania will stop in Franklin overnight uh, so that they can, um, they can have a rest stop because there aren't many of them out there. And it's not, a, it's not a simple bunch of parking lots. We don't want them to idle, so we have to supply them some means of powering their truck so they don't have to idle. It may actually be quite profitable, um, but it may put a lot of traffic at the corner of Davidson and, um, and uh, Easton for what, where I'm thinking it might go. Um, but, you know, that's not, obviously not written in stone. I think it's something that we need to discuss at a high level, and then we need to have a lot of public hearings on it. So we get your ideas in it, and um, we, don't, we, don't make, we don't have an unintended consequence. But it is something that we've, it's, we, you know, you have, you clearly have Mr. Vornlocker's office bugged, and we will find that bug. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad you liked what we were talking about. Um, I'll let Mr. Vornlocker discuss the intricacies of scenic corridor that Ms. Brandt brought up. Um, there are signs on uh, Mettler Road uh, about weights. I agree they're they're kind of minimal, and we have, have already discussed, for lack of a better word, fortifying those signs and making them uh, more obvious. Let me get to me. Uh, and the, as far as air quality requirements, I'd love it if we could have an ordinance on air quality requirements, but that is the venue of the state, and we're, we can't touch that. We did order, I announced at the last meeting, we are about to order 20 air quality <coughs> meters to distribute. One of them will go uh, if they accept it at the um, clubhouse at, uh, at um, Somerset Run and the clubhouse at Canal Walk. Um, and it will give us a case if things change uh, significantly in the air quality to be able to uh, go to the state and say, We've, you've got to help us here. Um, and we'll get those in soon so that they'll be in before more warehouses are built, so we'll have a before and after to uh, compare them to. Uh, that's what I had in answers. I hope I haven't missed anything, Mr. Bornlock. No, no, I, I can just, I, there's a couple things that you didn't cover that I can cover and maybe some things that I can clarify that you've asked me to clarify. Great. Um, first, we'll, we'll talk about bike lanes on, on uh, schoolhouse road so yes Jim we, we had several conversations about it unfortunately the the federal manual on uniform traffic control devices does not permit shadows on the section of schoolhouse road that is between basically canal walk boulevard and randolph road because of the current speed limit and there was several speed surveys done by the uh, township police department to see if a lower speed limit was warranted and it did not meet the requirements of a lower speed limit so therefore i can't put sharrows there and not be in conflict with the federal manual and putting it in conflict with the federal manual then would expose the township to a liability should someone hit a bicyclist where those shadows were painted and they should not have been so that's an ongoing project that we will continue to look at so that's why it wasn't done it's not because i didn't want to do it or i didn't want to have the public works department do it in fact i had an engineer in the public works department design the complete plan for schoolhouse road from uh, weston canal to uh, elizabeth unfortunately with that missing link it doesn't make much sense to do the parts you don't do it piecemeal you do length so we'll continue to work on that um, so that that's the answer to that as far as the four ton weight limits so four ton weight limits are are set by ordinance that and not every street is a four ton weight limit it has to have an ordinance local streets residential streets doesn't matter um, if it doesn't have an ordinance prohibiting truck traffic truck traffic is permitted um, the ordinance that was adopted by this council I probably maybe almost a year ago now was um, to establish weight restrictions on Weston Road from Elizabeth Avenue to its 
um, the bend, which then becomes the municipal portion of Weston Canal Road, and then that section of Weston Canal Road from that bend by the canal to the Manville Causeway, as well as Mettler's Road from um, Schoolhouse to Amwell Road. The signs are in place. I, I, I know that I, I had many discussions, uh, that, that, but they don't go in the middle. They only go on the end. So there is no sign at Mattler's and Schoolhouse, I'm Mattler's and Weston, because that's internal to the weight restriction. You put it at the beginning of the weight restriction. Um, Weston Road does not have a weight restriction between Elizabeth Avenue and Cedar Grove Lane, so the weight restriction starts at Elizabeth heading westbound. So that's the four ton weight limits. And Ma'am, ma you can't talk to me now. I only get to talk. Um, and if you have questions, you can certainly call my office. You all have my number. Um, so that's the weight restriction issue. Um, just just a, a little, and, and, and maybe I, I will not address all of it. Um, I, I, I am slightly offended, just slightly. Jan, you have never offended me before, but tonight you did. Um, and so what I will tell you is that the photo that you were discussing I believe is from 2014 and it was when your developer made a donation and I was there for that donation. Um, I have never played in a golf outing at uh, Royce Brook Country Club. I haven't played, been able to play golf because of physical issues since 2016 and I certainly had at that time in 2014 absolutely positively no idea who B9 Schoolhouse or Link Logistics might be. I don't even know that they existed in 2014. But your developer did, and your developer built many things in Franklin Township, and your developer also donated a lot of money, and this in particular fundraiser was a donation to the Township of Franklin. So therefore, as the manager, I would be there uh, at, at, at an event that was sponsored by the Somerset Business Partnership. So let's put it in perspective. I'm not in cahoots with a developer, and I kind of take offense to you even thinking that. But nonetheless, and I won't dispute your distancing, but you do live a little bit more than 50 feet away from Mettler's Road, and certainly um, much more than the loading docks on the other side where the building is proposed. As far as the third driveway, so the third driveway was actually something that I had suggested when we first began to look at, at this warehouse and how we were going to try to limit traffic in and out of this driveway to try to effectively um, curtail trucks from driving past Canal Walk. And one of the ways was to separate traffic, car traffic versus truck traffic, which from my olden days and traffic engineering days, the, the, what you don't want in a parking lot is a mix of small cars and trucks because when the trucks are backing up through the loading dock into the loading docks and in the area, you don't want the cars circling a building, but you want them to exit from the, par from the parking lot that is designed for cars. And one of the things that I had spoken with on more than one occasion with our engineer, Mr. Mazzi, about his review of Link Logistics B9's engineer's site plan was the need to keep separate the car traffic from the truck traffic and also design the driveway in such a manner so that trucks leaving the warehouse would only be able to physically make a right-hand turn and not be able to make a left-hand turn. There would be no reason to restrict car traffic from making a left-hand turn. In fact, while this might be wildly ridiculous in thought, someone who lives in Canal Walk could work someday at this warehouse and leave out there, but also people who are heading to points in Hillsborough who might go down Mettler's Road, or people who work in Manville, live in Manville, who would go down and not drive down to Randolph Road and drive the long way, that the left turn out of the parking lot would not be ever in conflict with truck traffic making a right turn out because truck traffic would be making a right and cars could make a left. The idea of a third driveway was one to satisfy the township's desire to keep car traffic separate from truck traffic and you can all shake your heads but that's the reason behind it. And the reason behind it is from a safety standpoint and from a desire to construct the driveways in such a way to keep trucks away from your neighborhood. 
that if, if there was no reason to keep trucks from making a left-hand turn, there would be no need, reason for a third driveway. So that was the reason for the third driveway. And that was as a result of discussions that we have had in-house that had nothing to do with link logistics. So that was that. And uh, the, the, only other, the only other thing that I, I've had recently had the opportunity to look through as a result of the traffic studies, um, the RFP that's out for the, the new traffic study that the township will be engaging someone to complete. Um, and I, was, I had the opportunity to look at traffic volumes. In particular, there was a study done by a firm called Abington Nay. It's an engineering firm that still exists. And that study was, was done on behalf of the township um, in 1985. Um, the, the study was done because the township had concern about traffic related to office buildings. And I got an opportunity to look at traffic volumes related to that traffic study in 1985 and the projected volumes for 1990 and 2000, which is what that study was asked to do. The, the traffic in the Davidson Avenue, Elizabeth Avenue, Campus Drive, Weston Canal Road area at that time, 1985 to 1990, exceeds the traffic volumes of today by a significant number. There was much more traffic on the roads of that area of the town at that time 35 years ago than there is today. That's primarily due to a shift in the way people work. Um, well, there were trucks too because there were warehouses, distribution centers, and right now with most of the, the, the proposed buildings, not disputing the issue that truck in tra traffic will increase, but the truth is that right now with the number of buildings that are in place, they basically equal the number of buildings that were in place then. There were a number of industrial properties that are no longer there that were there then, but most of the car traffic was such that it caused great con congestion. You've heard me say this before. Um, I, I don't want it to go back to that. Um, I, that's why I think it's important that we look at the traffic condition now and what the projected traffic conditions will be in the future. That's the purpose of the traffic study that the township will engage in soon. Um, but that, that traffic is something that, um, that is, is not something that will, is, is being taken lightly. It, it is something that the township is about to invest a significant amount of money. And Dr. Kiki, I'll refer to you as Dr. Kiki because that's what you are, a professor. Uh, and so I, it's interesting, I have reason to travel to 78 Carter often. My family, my wife's family, and now my son and daughter-in-law and grandchild live uh, in Pennsylvania. And I was there on Sunday and there were uh, nearly 100 trucks on the uh, eastbound side of 78, right around 630 in that area um, just before Jugtown Mountain. Um, I know you're familiar with it. Um, that, that's what brought that conversation with the mayor and I, and actually and Councilman Wright, who's not here. I had that conversation with him this morning. Um, there are, there are many, many things to be concerned about, but I certainly think that it's something that should be given some thought. Um, my fear is that given the, the, the lay of the land, so to speak, in Franklin Township, I don't know where you can put one that would be um, satisfactory in size to deal with the problem and not have an impact on another residential neighborhood other than Canal Walk. And that's what we have to look at. So I think that's all the questions that I needed to answer for now. Thank you. Um, now I don't have to ask you about the picture of the golf outing. And now you know. Yes. Um, okay, uh, if for those of you who are trying to follow along our circuitous uh, agenda, we are now to council comments and reports, and we'll start with Council Member Potasnik. Um, thank you, Mayor. Just one quick announcement for folks who live in Ward 1 along Ridings Parkway. Um, the mayor, myself, the township manager, and our director of public works, uh, Carl Hauk, are going to have a meeting at 6 p.m. on Monday, July 10th, uh, to discuss the median and improvements that can be made to ensure it's more consistent. It also is more able and easily uh, able to be maintained consistently, and then also that it's doing its job to help absorb water and protect the environment and the community. Um, you know, with some tree planting. So we had a proposal 
um, for folks as they drive into Ridings Parkway, kind of to mimic that with live trees. There's a few dead ones. We'll need to replace those um, with live trees throughout the whole segment with grass underneath. And this way it can be kept uh, low and then you can get the full benefits of the tree canopy cover. Um, so that again is on Monday, July 10th at 6 p.m. at the Consolata Missions now but it was formerly, now it's the Board Administrative Complex for the Franklin Board of Education. Um, so if you live on Ridings Parkway, English Lane, Stirrup Way, Hunter's Run, or Fox Hill Road, you're welcome to join us. You can also send me an email. Um, my email is on the website and also in the letter. Um, I want to thank the clerk and the clerk's office for sending those out to the homeowners there. And we look forward to a nice discussion and helping to resolve what has become, um, you know, something that's very inconsistent and a nuisance, but also probably not doing the best it can to provide uh, uh, cover for the community. Last point on that too is the roadway is gonna be repaved. That's sort of separate from what happens in the median. So um, I know there's been complaints about that as well and it's one of the, um, the worst in the town and it's getting attention. So uh, that concludes my report this evening. Thank you, council member. Councilman Oni Jaka. You're my favorite councilman. <laughs> uh, Councilwoman Pruitt has stepped out. Councilwoman Francois. You didn't speak in the mic and say what you just said. That you had nothing for today. <laughs> <laughs> so I say it for you. Good evening, everyone. I just want to announce that the Franklin Township Community Foundation gave out two scholarship awards to two scholarship high school uh, recipients. $5,000 awards to two engineering students. And uh, the, the, the students that received the $5,000 awards, they had to write an essay about why they wanted to major in, in engineering. They had to uh, be able to show what community service they, they have been engaged in. They had to have a 90 or more GPA average, uh, no major discipline issues. And the essays that they wrote and the reasons why they were going to major in engineering was phenomenal. One was a young lady. I happen to be an engineering student, so I'm proud that, that we need more, more women in engineering. And one was a, 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 a male. The, the guy was Alex Quisbert, and the female was Gabrielle Barb Trodano. And they were very, very impressive. And we've been sitting on the Community Foundation for quite a few years, myself, and Deputy Mayor Rom, um, and uh, Deputy uh, and Councilman Bessanella, and Councilwoman Pruitt. And so this is a, one, of the, one of the things that we're very proud of about the Community Foundation, giving out these scholarship awards. It doesn't seem like it's a lot, but $5,000 goes a long way when you're a student. And we're, we're very, very proud to be, be a part of that and to invest in our youth's future and engineering and specific, specifically. And most of the, the essays that they wrote, they talked about the reason why they wanted to measure in engineering, to make the world a better place. So it, it was a great award ceremony. So I just wanted to highlight that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, and don't forget about our June, July 3rd fireworks. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman. When I went to Syracuse, it was $6,000 tuition. So then that would have been a lot of money. That's the, no, 5,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. Thank you. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. No, 5,000 is a lot. I mean, 1,000 is a lot. And we have a lot of great local scholarships that do 1,000, 2,000. And that's important. But let me tell you, 5,000 is and, and, and well deserved by the students that we awarded them to. Uh, so uh, a couple things. Uh, so I mentioned the bike lanes and schoolhouse. I mean, it, it sounds a good idea. And I don't know where we're at in that point of putting bike lanes in some of the places that were designated quite some time ago. Um, just, of course, what I want to make sure it's done safely and with a very, I personally like them to be divided and off of the roadway, but if nothing else, a very wide uh, well-marked, well-lit area for the bicycle, but um, there may be a reason it's not in that particular spot now, but we look into and try to find out. So um, Juneteenth Parade, um, not sure who, I know most of us were, were there in some capacity or another. Um, it was uh, wonderful going down Hamilton Street on the float. I know we were looking and recalling a lot of uh, uh, 
places that have been there for generations and a lot of the new uh, construction. But the most important part of the day, of course, was celebrating with the local community about um, uh, the long overdue, long overlooked um, important part of history that Juneteenth represents. And um, there was, uh, I was there for a while. I know there was somewhat of a festival or gathering at the park. And lots of people, including uh, our Congresswoman uh, Bonnie Watson Coleman and others, um, spoke. But uh, I look forward, I imagine next year it may be another parade. And it's good to put Hamilton Street to use for that. Um, there's a lot of things mentioned tonight. Um, and I'm just going to say this in general, uh, whether it's a traffic study or uh, any kind of report, uh, that's looked into or studied and presented. Um, doesn't have to be a warehouse, it doesn't have to be traffic. A lot of studies are traffic related, of course. But at the end of the day, because I've dealt with probably dozens if not hundreds over the last several years, you consider the source. In other words, who's footing the bill, what their objective, and what's their goals. And I don't say that in a mean way. It's just, it's like any written information that someone's hired to do. You follow, technically follow guidelines, but it's, let's just say, for all the technical aspects of these reports, a lot of it's uh, subjective and discretionary as far as what's included and how it's presented. But I say this seriously, not simply about traffic reports or anything to do at warehouses. It's just um, everyone needs to be looked at, reviewed, double-checked, have various other opinions that may agree or disagree, part of the discussion. So you just have to take it in context of, like I say, I like to use the expression, who's footing the bill and for what purpose. Um, we had a public safety meeting tonight, discussed a handful of things, uh, nothing real urgent to mention a couple of things. Uh, very soon, if not now, the command post vehicle is being built. It's being custom built specifically to the uh, desires and needs that our public safety experts have put out to the company building it. And of course, it's custom built almost like one of those big fancy RVs would be. It will be several months before we get it. But the $500,000, which is a fantastic grant, leaves more money that we had already allocated in our own bank account to be put to other uses, or not to be put to other uses, but to be part of our fund, our, our money in the bank, so to speak. So that will be coming in several months. And of course, we will tell the public about it, perhaps have uh, whatever the public safety director wants to when, when we unveil it to the public. Uh, discussed uh, looking at different rates for our uh, outside jobs, so to speak, when they're doing traffic work or road repaving, that kind of stuff. We gotta make sure it's at a practical and competitive level. So we're reviewing that for possible changes. And I'm not sure the details, but the Garden State Track Club, which is a wonderful organization, is presenting eight scholarships to um, uh, students, and we may do that here down the road. It involves um, a lot of uh, diligent work by um, police department and something called our Garden State Track Club, which has been around for a while, if, if I'm remembering. It's what I remember. It's been around a long time. Um, and I think that was it. Oh, and the American Civic League finalist, we were the only town in New Jersey to have a finalist go to the national competition. And although they didn't win, it was a great honor. And I know uh, Senator Booker had acknowledged uh, those efforts, and I think it was going to formally acknowledge them. But um, we were the only town to uh, in New Jersey to have somebody there. Uh, I think that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Udine. Thank you. Good evening. There wasn't any. Um community meetings uh, in the last two weeks. So um, what I have attended is a soft opening of Tribe Studios located in 800 Hamilton Street. Um, it's really a very cute concept. Um, it's catered towards 
more of the, of the social media. Um, they have it set up where you can go into the building. I think it's, you know, you call ahead of, of time to schedule a uh, viewing and they have different photo sessions set up so you can go in and do your like Instagram or Facebook, um, Snapchat, whatever media that you have, um, TikTok. And it's really interesting their concept that the way ha they have it. It's like if you go in, it's like you go into a color room. So, you know, there's a fl flower wall, there's a, a musician wall, there's, you know, all sorts of things. And, and if you're not into a certain wall, it's like literally they can pull down the curtain and change it to a different um, viewing. So it's really interesting. Um, and I thought it was a complete different, um, uh, you know, place that I've been to like, uh, on a grand opening in Somerset. So Tribe Studios, 800 Hamilton Street, please go check them out, give them a call. Um, and you know, you'll be surprised they have a lot going on in that small space. Um, there's been a couple emails and phone calls around street signages. Um, I've reported them out to the township manager around Demont Lane having some signages not visible. Um, and it's the trees, branches that are growing out. So um, DPW is definitely, it's on their radar. Um, and I'm sure they're going to uh, take care of that very soon. So thank you for reaching out and letting us know about the street signages. Um, I don't want to be too repetitive, but I agree with Councilman Fessanella about the bike lanes. Um, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I've seen families go out in bikes, especially now since it's summertime. Um, you know, riding it in the streets is not the best. It's, you know, it's a concern. I've given um, paths to families when I've seen them on the road. Um, so it's, it's a great idea. I think we'll take a look at it if it's feasible or not, but um, I do like that idea. Traffic study has been discussed over a couple months, and I think you know that's what resulted in us of making sure that we have it approved in our end and have it done. I think it's um, high time that we looked at it again. Um, things have changed from the pandemic. We have more population growth, right? We have businesses growing. Um, you know, we have the warehouse issues going on. I think traffic study is something that's going to help us understand our area. It's going to help us understand what we need to do next in the next five years. Um, at least it's going to give us an idea, and we can work with the public understanding what you guys want and needs and kind of do a, a work session. Um, I think, oh, congratulations to the 2023 class. I know um, I could not attend the graduation ceremonies for Franklin High School and the other smaller um, middle schools that had it, but... I always love um, attending these graduation ceremonies or moving up ceremonies, as they call it. So congratulations to all the little ones as well as the seniors. Um, and lastly, I do want to wish um, Eid Mubarak to all the Muslim families that will be celebrating it tomorrow. Um, and that wraps up my report. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Pruitt, you've had a harrowing night. Are you up for a council comment? Um, mentally, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do I, I do want to apologize for my tardiness. Uh, I was at the State House uh, for budget, uh, but I, I, I don't really have anything else. I'm just happy to finally be here with y'all. So there was a public safety meeting. I was unable to make it. Councilman Vassanella okay. has. Great. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a quick update on the OMCA uh, at Franklin. Um, I think we reported out a few months ago that uh, the OMCA of uh, uh, Greater Somerset Hills uh, was undertaking a uh, study, feasibility study, of uh, building a OMCA in Franklin. Uh, so that study uh, was completed um, on May uh, 30th, I believe, and uh, they reported out the results today. Uh, the good news is the um, survey came out um, supporting the YMCA in Franklin. Everybody understood it's a very valuable addition to the township. It's going to help and serve a lot of uh, families and kids, adults, everybody uh, alike. Um, so they have recommended YMCA to go ahead with the... Uh, uh, I guess the campaign, the uh, campaign to um, fundraise uh, for the uh, production. So uh, they would be 
undertaking that in the coming months. And you will uh, hear from all of us at the time. Uh, it's purely f going to be funded by uh, public donations and uh, the grants and, and, and the loans uh, that uh, they will um, be responsible to raise. Uh, so that is uh, off and running. Uh, hopefully, um, it will uh, become a reality in the township uh, in a few years. And that's, that's a good news. And other than that, um, uh, I couldn't attend uh, the planning board meeting because uh, I was ill. Um, but um, I do fo hear uh, your comments, and then you know we would uh, definitely have a conversation uh, about some of the concerns that you expressed. Um, I had um, been to a, two, uh, I guess, two graduations uh, locally, um, as well as a, a ribbon cutting ceremony of a real estate firm. Um, Keller Williams on Davidson Avenue um, and if you are uh, making a left on Route 27 from Finnegan's Lane sometimes you know that gets backed up uh, the good news is uh, the State uh, Department of Transportation uh, has decided to make a left turn lane at that light so um, going to be a much uh, smoother and a, a faster left turn into Franklin Township from Finnegan's Lane into Route 27 uh, so that should be coming up uh, pretty soon last but not least HRC uh, is going to have its meeting tomorrow uh, Environmental Commission uh, is going to present the goals and missions um, members as well as uh, uh, a happy to announce that junior commissioner Helen um, has graduated so we would be looking for a, a new junior commissioner as you know we have a uh, high school student uh, serve as a junior commissioner in the and then that I did as in the county uh, work workforce development board um, board meeting where we appointed uh, new organizations to uh, do your term uh, run the one stop uh, and uh, the training program as well as the administration uh, all I have uh, mr. mayor well thank you I, I I know you were at a school opening as well not the high school <laughs> no a mosque Oh, Sadiq, Sadiq School. Yes, I forgot about that. Yes, uh, 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 our uh, Interfaith Council President, uh, uh, his uh, tireless efforts uh, resulted in a brand new uh, school at the uh, Masjid Ali um, last weekend. Yes, thank you for reminding. Um, so um, it's unbelievable. The school looks fantastic. Um, it's, again, uh, it's all generated through donations and philanthropy. Uh, and um, hours and hours of uh, efforts to put it together as the president of the school. Um, hats off to uh, our good friend, uh, Dr. I'm going to say this correctly, Dr. Karazi. <laughs> good job. A great addition to the township. Private school at uh, very affordable tuition. Am I correct? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I regret not being able to go to Juneteenth and the high school graduation. I got COVID. So if I can get COVID as careful as I am, please, please be careful. Um, and But I'm two weeks out now, so I felt it was safe to come here. They told me I could come back to work, so I came here. Um, I've spoken enough. Uh, so we are on to the manager comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just have two things um, to add to earlier, having nothing to do with earlier. Um, one is just to reiterate Councilwoman Francois' uh, statement about the fireworks. Um, July 3rd, uh, which is a Monday before, um, and it begins at 6 p.m. Music, food trucks, um, entertainment at the gazebo, 
um, come one, come all. Weather forecast, I've been watching multiple times a day, and <laughs> right now, maybe a little overcast, no real rain in the forecast. Keep your fingers crossed. Don't want two years ago. It was somewhat of a deluge right as the fireworks first launched. We don't need that again. Um, but then on a little bit more serious note, um, speaking of rainstorms, uh, sometime shortly after midnight last night, um, the police department's uh, radio tower was struck by lightning. Um, that makes a big boom. I got to see the videotape of it from our uh, security cameras. Um, it knocked out a number of different functions within um, police the police department as a whole and dispatch. Most things came back up online and there's redundant systems for everything that we have. If something fails here, it either gets switched to another agency like Somerset County uh, Communications, um, which is what happened with some things. Everything is back up online except for there were two switches, telephone, computer, and network switches that got knocked out. Um, they were rebuilt by the IT department through the course of today. Um, and there might still be some non-emergency extensions, desk extensions, in the police department. So if you were trying to call someone in particular and got a message, something along the lines of, you know, that number is not available and that might carry on into the morning, kind of had to send the IT department home since they've been working since 1230 this morning. Um, it, that might happen into tomorrow, but I believe that just about everything is up. 911 is up and running. Dispatch is up and running. Non-emergency 873-2300, which is a separate system, um, uh, separate and apart from the uh, internet IP phone system that's the non-emergency line, that's up and running. So everything's, you know, you should be able to get the police department if you need them without any problem whatsoever. In an emergency, dial 911 and you will absolutely get the police department. Um, but I just wanted to bring everybody up to speed on that um, event. Lightning strike. Um, that's what I got for you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Number nine, council discussion item, there is none. Number 10, there are no approval of the minutes, no minutes to approve. Uh, time to pay the bills, the warrants of $9,469,368.69 on June 27th are presented to the Township Council for payment. Do we have a motion on the warrants? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone would like to pull an item? Madam Clerk. Mm. Deputy Mayor Barrison. Yes. Councilman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Onijaka. Yes. Councilmember Pasasnik. Yes. Councilwoman Pewitt. Yes. Councilwoman Udine. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Public hearing on and adoptions on second reading. First reading is announced to the public that we're going to consider an ordinance. Second reading is an opportunity for the public to speak and uh, the potential that we will pass the ordinance. Ordinance 4415-23 authorizing the acceptance of a deed of easement conveying a permanent water pump uh, easement and two temporary construction easements from Laurel Avenue Corporation con uh, concerning property at block 502 lots 172.04, 112.04, and 113.03 is presented for public hearing and final adoption. The public hearing has been noticed as required to have a motion to open public hearing. So moved. Seconded. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of opening public hearing say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. We are open for public hearing on this item only. Same rules as stated before. Now you're seeing no one come forward or motion to close the public portion of the hearing on this ordinance. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of closing public hearing say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. Do we have a motion to adopt? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the item? Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Barrison. Yes. Councilman, Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Onijaka. Yes. Councilmember Potasnik. Yes. Councilwoman Puritt. Yes. Councilwoman Dean. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. 
Ordinance number 4416-23, an ordinance amending the code of the Township of Franklin County of Somerset State of New Jersey, more particularly Chapter 115, Dogs and Other Animals, Section 115-15, Procedure After Infliction of Dog or Cat Bite, is presented for a township hearing and final adoption. The public hearing has been noticed as required. Do we have a motion to open for public hearing? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. We're open for public hearing on this item only. Same rules. See no one come forward, may or a motion to close the public portion of the hearing on this ordinance. Second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor of closing public portion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion is carried. The public hearing is closed. We have a motion to adopt. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. So this is an ordinance we have an ordinance that tells what to do if a dog bites a person, but we don't have an ordinance for what to do if a dog bites another animal. Now we're clearing that up. Uh, we're doing that because it happens. Um, and any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Embarrassin? Yes. Councilman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilmember Pesasnik? Yes. Councilwoman Pewitt? Yes. Councilwoman Udine? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright. We have no ordinances on first meeting, but I'll give some foreshadowing. Um, the, we, um, the bamboo ordinance that you may have heard about if you were following last time will likely be on the uh, agenda next time. Um, consent agenda, items A through P is listed on the consent agenda portion of this meeting. I present the Township Council for adoption. Do I have a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone like to pull an item or discuss an item? Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Barrison? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilmember Potasnik? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilman Udine? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Uh, resolutions to be voted on separately. There are none. Any old business boards, committees, or commission vacancies? <laughs> Hearing none, there is no executive session. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, you have to stay here. We are adjourned. Be well, Franklin. Mr. Mayor, could you just stay down here for one minute?